It's a beautiful sunny day in the Scottish borders. And instead of doing a story about some historical adventures, I'm going to go on a walk and an adventure on my own. See what we can find if there's anything interesting on the way. I'll stop and show you. First, I'm going to eat my breakfast on the beautiful banks of the River Tweed. There's a heron just coming into land there. Try and get land up. Okay, breakfast over, let's go. But there's one interesting thing that I've just noticed here. Because in this, this area, just near where I live, I'm always talking about this old drawbridge that used to just cross the river here from the 11th to the 15th century. No trace of it remains, and I'm always looking for traces, but I can never find them. I talk about it all the time. I talk about it in almost every video that I make. In fact, I'm beginning to bore myself because I talk so much about this drawbridge. But in the water here, I'm just looking and I can see what looks like a sculpted hexagonal stone and I'm just thinking, could that be part of it? Let me just show you. Can you see that? It's definitely a man-made stone, but I don't know what, from what period it it belongs. I'm tempted to take my socks and shoes off and get in there and not today. This is the confluence of the rivers Tweed and Elwyn or, or Allen Water which stretches back there to Elwyn Glen. Reputedly the most haunted place in Scotland according to Sir Walter Scott. There's a big hill just, that's not a big hill, it's a small hill, just over there sits above Elwyn Glen, that haunted glen that I was telling you about earlier. And that hill is known as the Fairies Bowling Green. The Fairies Bowling Green. So it's thought the fairies inhabited that hill up there and they used to roll rocks down it into Elwyn Glen. And one of the reasons why Elwyn Glen is perceived to be this haunted place is because of these little magical fairy stones that were found there all the time. Little shaped stones, apparently they're volcanic, but back in the day people thought they were magic and the fairies had made them and they rolled them down from that hill. If you can find any fairy stones in Elwyn Glen, please, please let me know because I can never find them. stuff is really common in the borderlands these days. Oil seed rape. Fantastic yellow colour but no fantastic if you suffer from hay fever. As I reach this point in the walk here, I'm about two miles away from my home. You get a fantastic view of probably the most iconic site in the entire Scottish borders, which is this, the Eildon Hills. So much history, so much mystery, all wrapped up in that hill complex over there. When Sir Walter Scott stood on the Elden Hills there, he reckoned he could pick out 58, 58 sites of special historical interest from the top. I reckon it's much more than that. Even standing here, you can see loads from Turning Stone, where I made my last video, 
to the Battle of Skirmish Hill, just down there. Melrose Abbey over there. And the three brethren, the Catrail, Torwood Lee Brock, all in the distance there, Call Shields Hill Fort. It's just a wash with history every single turn. the scenic little village of Gattonside, just opposite Melrose on the River Tweed. This old suspension bridge forms the main link between Melrose and Gattonside. There is Melrose Abbey just over there, in the shadow of the Oldham Hills. But today, I'm going to bypass Melrose and head towards Newstead, which is a smaller village just a bit further downstream on the Tweed. I told you you'd see horses here. Just a large white horse. Hello. Hello, boy. If you like riverside walks, you'll love it here. Oh, those little ducklings are so cute. Problem is with the resurgence of otters in the river Tweed, I don't really hold out much hope for a lot of them surviving. an absolute swarm of sand martins over there. I'll try and zoom in and let you see. Really is an amazing sight. There must be hundreds of them over there, thousands even. Wow. Another delightfully quaint and old fashioned village and this time it is a new state. Not the best street name in Scotland, there must be up there. Big but the little village of Newstead is famous not because of its beautiful little streets, but because it sits on the site of the Roman fort of Trimontium. Biggest and most important Roman fort in all of Scotland, arguably. Nowadays, I suppose we just Take it as granted, it's just common knowledge that Trimontium Roman Fort sat on this site. But it was only really pinpointed and discovered here around 1910. So what was it before that and why? Why is Newstead known as Newstead? You see, before 1910, in the pinpoint location of this, this Trimontium, the people of this area were still finding the traces of Trimontium. They just didn't know what it was. In the field opposite there, where the main fort was, there was always, always discoveries of these huge red sandstone blocks, which really clearly indicated that there was some large red sandstone structure in there. But what the people of this area believed that structure to be was a remake of Old Melrose Abbey. Old Melrose Abbey is about two or three miles down that way, or was down that way. But after the seventh or eighth century, it was gone. And the people reckoned that it was built in this field here because of all the sandstone that was found there. It was only in 1910 that all that sandstone was clearly 
and positively identified as the walls and buildings of Trimontium Roman Fort. But this was the new stead, the new abbey. And that's why Newstead got its name. This part of Trimontium just in front of me here is the only real amphitheatre which has been archaeologically identified in Scotland. Wonder what went on here. There's more, there's more to this site than just the, the fort and the city and the amphitheatre and all the other trappings that went with it. You can you see this was the main thoroughfare of Deer Street and this was where Deer Street crossed the River Tweed. But the question is, how did it cross the River Tweed? Tweed? And we are. But the first bridge over the River Tweed here was Roman, but where was it? There are no traces of the Roman bridge left, but local archaeologist, historian, and general kind of maverick genius, Walter Elliot. If you've not read any of Walter's books, you probably should. But Walter has doused this area and he thinks he's found what look like the pillars of a bridge going into the water just here and somewhere over that other side there. Parallel lines of gigantic wooden pillars holding a bridge here. So right here somewhere there's a Roman bridge. And then the ancients, the natives have copied it and then newer into modernity have copied it again and even the 1970s we've copied it again. It's a fantastic route north into Scotland or south towards England. I love this bridge. Such an architectural wonder. I'm leaving the River Tweed Valley now and I'm joining the River Leader. Venture deep, deep into the dark forest, the unknown forest, the forest of darkness and death. Must be quite an ancient forest. This is starting to see a lot of old yew trees and oak trees popping up. Look at this. When you start to enter a bit of forest like this, which is full of these old yew trees, it begins to feel like you're walking biologically back in time. These are like the ancient history woods compared to the, the new plantations further down towards the Tweed. Love these old trees. The vegetation's beginning to get a bit thicker now. I think I might be lost, actually. Ah, my first view of Black Hill near Erroston. This was my target for today, but I wasn't sure if I was going to have time. I think I might. my drone up there for a few wee shots of the scenery around here but it's very difficult to, to use a drone these days because they're completely demonised in the press. Now I'm quite sensible with mine but people who believe what they read in the sun and all these other stupid publications you know they, they think you're some sort of evil demon because you've got a drone. You should be locked up mate. Throw away the key. You're a freaking evil bastard. this weather. Just want to dive in that river. I've got too much of a tight schedule, I need to hurry up. Yeah, 
I've got a daughter who I need to pick up from school. And I've got a large greyhound called Ernie. And the longer I stay away from Ernie, the more happy and excited he is to see me when I get back. And he practically mauls me. So I need to get back quite soon. This really is a wonderful spot for a bench. This is the first bridge over the River Leader since its mouth of the Tweed. The river seems to be getting bigger as it goes upstream. Strange. Just arriving now in the small town of Eroston, where I'm going to go and stop for some lunch. But I really want to get up Black Hill there, so that's my aim for this afternoon. So, yeah, I'm leaving Eroston now. I'm going to head back up the road I came to the heights of Black Hill. So warm today, I had to go and get some sun cream. You know, in Scotland, we have over 120 different words to describe rain, but only one word to describe sun cream. And that's sun cream. Hello? Sun fan lotion? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. Sort of use sometime most as well, we've got two different ones to describe some cream. There she is, we're getting closer. Looks like quite a lot of forest around the bottom that we might have to get through. Quite a lot of hares going about in the fields here. Good job I never brought Ernie. He's going mad. It's funny when you're driving along the A68, Black Hill looks like a, a cone, but from this side it's a nice flat tabletop hill. And apparently there are the remains of an Iron Age hill fort up there, so hopefully we can see something when we get up. actually quite rocky once you get round to this eastern edge. Some of you may have seen a film I made about the Brother Stones. There they are, they are. And here we are, at the summit of Black Hill. With absolutely fantastically spectacular views, right over the whole Scottish borders. The Chiviots, the Lammermuirs, the Eildons, and the Southern Uplands. Wow! You 
see the bridges that lead through that I've just came from. Trace my steps all the way back to Gala Shields. 12 miles I've walked, 12 miles! Wow! But it's worth it. Worth it for this spectacular view. If you fancy a nice little 12 mile stroll, why not leave Gala Shields via Gattonside, Melrose, Newstead, Edelston to the summer of Black Hill for spectacular views and a nice bit of exercise.